Welcome to the continuation of my video in the series of videos on forest inventory. Uh, in this video, I will be bringing to us uh, a lecture on simple random sampling. Simple random sampling. In previous videos, I have explained sampling techniques in terms of the major categories of sampling techniques that we have the probability sampling techniques and the non-probability sampling techniques. So the very first of the probability sampling techniques is the simple random sampling. It's the simplest of all sampling methods. And uh, that's what we'll be looking at in this video. So what is simple random sampling? Uh, it's also called unrestricted random sampling because it involves sampling with complete randomization that is without any restriction uh, this particular sampling technique is something we use in very small forest areas with homogeneous population such that any sample selected is a true representative of the forest area uh, if you look to the right of the screen you will see uh, uh, the image of a forest area there and you look at the grid lines vertical and horizontal grid lines that are made on the forest now if you look at this you will realize that the forest condition is more or less homogeneous, such that, generally speaking, I would say, because in real life, you don't have exactly homogeneous condition. But generally speaking, broadly speaking, you can see homogeneity here. And it is such that when you select any of the cells, it should be a representative of the entire area. So in selecting a sample of n units or n plots, as the case may be, every possible combination of n units has equal chance of being selected. By that, I mean this chart you have on the right hand of the screen. If I want to select three or four, let's say four plots randomly from this setting now, any four of them should have, I mean, equal chance of being selected. And the way to ensure that is to, you know, do randomization, complete randomization of all the plots so that each of them will have equal chance of being picked. So how do we use or how do we implement simple random sampling? To so use simple random sampling technique, normally we divide the whole area into n sampling units, just as uh, I have done here on the right hand side. You will, depending on the size of the sample plots you want to have, you will draw grid lines vertically and horizontally on an image of the forest, and that will divide the whole forest area into. Uh, into capital N, N sampling units. So all the sampling units together, if you count them from one to the end, it does the capital N. So from this population of sampling units, you will now select a sample, and the sample is small letter N, is denoted, denoted as small letter N uh, for enumeration. And like I said, to do that, you use a random device because uh, it is not supposed to be done arbitrarily or haphazardly. No. To make it random, a random device must be used. Because as humans, we are subjective. We have our biases. If you say, okay, just pick four out of these now, I mean, your choice may be because, okay, I'm picking this one because it, it comes first, 
or this is the one that my eyes goes to first, or this is the one I touch, you know, there could be all sorts of biases. Oh, okay, I think this one is it will be easily accessible. You know, all sorts of reasons can be adduced. But for you to avoid bias completely, you use a random device. And an example of random device is the table of random numbers. There's a table of random numbers which can be used. Uh, there is also the calculator, your scientific calculator. For some of them, it has a function for random number generation. So you can use that. You can also use the computer. The computer can also be used to generate random digits uh, to, to guide your randomization process. And uh, the very, very simple way to also do it, which we do primitively, if the number of units are very small, that's it, the capital N, if they are small, you can write numbers in small, small pieces of paper, roll them up, and then shake them, you know, put, pull them together, shake them in a container vigorously, and then you just pick that's and then you open up what you have picked and see what number it is so that is also a random device so any random device can be used to select your sample now look at uh, this forest this location if you look at this location you will realize that in some parts of it there is a uh, very sparse population that's in terms of vegetation cover this is a forest area actually so you will see areas to the northwest of the screen you will realize that it's sparse that's more or less grassland and then to the northeast of the screen and the north of the screen you will see is heavily forested if you look at the southeast corner also of the screen you will see that it is heavily forested. But look at the center of the screen, you will see that the population of vegetation there is very sparse. So very scanty vegetation. So this forest area now, if you are looking at it in its entirety, you cannot describe it as homogeneous. So for this kind of forest area, simple random sampling will not be applicable because the forest is not homogeneous. Let's look at the next one. I mean, okay, if, if you put your grids on this forest area now, you realize that some grid points will fall. I mean, some grids, will, some cells rather, will fall completely on the sparse, sparsely vegetated areas, and some will fall on the heavily vegetated areas. So, Simple random sampling cannot be applied in this kind of situation. The condition of the forest is not homogeneous. Let's check the next one. Here also is another forest area. If you look to the right of the screen, you realize that the vegetation too is very scanty there. Very, very scanty. You could see the bare ground, footpath, and all those things there. If you look to the left of the screen, you realize that that portion is heavily forested. So here again, you cannot apply simple random sampling because if you put your grid lines and look at the cells, you will see that some fall on heavily vegetated area, some not so heavily vegetated. And so, Simple random sampling cannot be applied in this circumstance. Let's check the next one, location C. Now, for location C, it's almost uniformly vegetated. So, this talks of homogeneous condition. And if you put your grid on this and you look at the cells, any particular cell there is true representative of the entire area, you know. So here, simple random sampling can be applied without any problem. It's appropriate in this place. And then let's look at the last one there, location D. Here also you see homogeneity of condition. The entire area is sparsely populated in terms of vegetation cover. 
I mean, you can see the extras, you can see some tree crowns, and you can also see the ground. So it's not, it's, it's not heavily populated. But the entire area is homogeneous. The condition is similar all across the forest area. So if you set your grip on this, you can see that any particular one you pick there will be representative of the entire area. So here again, simple random sampling is very appropriate. So let's see how we implement it. Let's assume that we have a total forest area of 500 by 400 meters, 500 meters by 400 meters, from which we are to select some sample plots for enumeration. So you can see the sketch there. Let's say this is the entire forest area, a rectangular uh, forest block, 500 meters by 400 meters. Assuming that's the forest area we have, to enumerate. Now we cannot do 100% enumeration by measuring every single tree in this area. It's so large. So we want to use, we want to select some samples to measure. Now we are assuming that this area is homogeneous because that's the condition for implementing simple random sampling. So let's see what we do. We we'll divide. The first thing we do there, assuming we want to use sample plot size of 50 meters by 50 meters. Now, a sketch map of the area will be prepared. And then you have the vertical and horizontal grid lines drawn on the map, just as I have done here on the left hand side of the, of, of the screen. And then all the units will be numbered. You can see how they are numbered sequentially. They have been numbered sequentially from left to right, le and then right to left, left to right, right to left. That's the way the numbering is done. So we have plots 1 to 80. So out of this 80, if we are to select 10 sample plots from the area, that's 10 sample plots from this area, a random device will be used to get the 10 plots. So after using the random device, let's say I have the following selection, the following numbers, number 2, number 13, number 18, number 28, number 31, number 42, number 45, number 53, number 66, and number 80. Those are the plots that have been randomly selected. So this is the way my feed layout would be, and this is what the feed crew, the inventory crew, we need to use to carry out the enumeration. So with this now, I know that, okay, I need to sample. If my uh, starting point is on top of the area, there, if, if that's the place through which I will navigate into the forest, that means the first plot I will encounter for enumeration will be plot two. And after enumerating plot two, I can easily move to plot 18. So on the ground, physically on the ground, it's not where you will do the demarcation and demarcate the whole area physically on ground to 80 units first. No, this is done on paper. And once it is done on paper, you can now translate that to the field and go directly to the plot you have to enumerate. So if I'm using this sam sampling plan now, I will enumerate plot two. I know that at the edge of plot two is plot 18 then easily I can enumerate plot 18. So it's not that I will, after enumerating plot 2, I will navigate to plot 3, plot 4, plot 5, plot, and no, 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 no. You don't do that. From plot 2, I come straight to plot 18. From plot 18, my next plot, plot 13 here. So I know since each plot is 50 meter by 50 meters, I know from the edge of plot 18 here, I need to take 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50. 200 meters in this direction will bring me to plot 13. So I will enumerate plot 13. And after completing the work on plot 13, I move to plot 28, which is just by the side of it. And from there, I move 50 meters away in this direction 
it will bring me to the edge of plot 31, which I will also enumerate easily. And from there, I can move downward this way, 50 meters this way, 50 meters this way. It brings me to the edge of this plot 53 here. There I will enumerate that. And from plot 53, I can easily do 50 meters this way. I come to plot 66, I will enumerate it. 50 meters this way brings me to plot 45, I will enumerate it. And from plot 45, I can take 100 meters. That's 50 plus 50. 100 meters here will bring me to plot 42. And once I finish the work in plot 42, again, 50 meter, 50 meter downward this way will bring me to plot 80. So that way, I've completed the enumeration. So I will not bother to visit plot 21 or plot 10 or plot 70. I have no business in all those areas. I will only navigate to the plots that I have to sample. So doing it like this on paper helps to guide my movement when I get to the field. And that's the way to implement simple random sampling. In the next video, we'll be looking at a work example on simple random sampling. See you in the next video. Thank you.